bike backwards just like you the last time. Let's get this shit rocking. Uh, I guess I'll just hold it in my hand. Me and Brand, All right. and our boy Brandon, we're back at it again with another, another banger. <laughs> Big old banger. Uh, stutter after me. Shouts out to the boy Brandon. Hey, there we go. You know, uh, it's just the bang bros out here. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that sounds like some type of porn. <laughs> you know, we're back at it again, again with another banger. banger. Will my camera stay right there? Banger. Oh, uh, yeah, it will. Perfect. You got to get this shit on the road. Better get this shit on the road. All right, welcome back to another episode of Stutter <laughs> After Me. All right, um, I'm, I'm here with my boys again for a second podcast in a row. Yeah. Brennan, J. Ray, and Dre Knowles, hey. baby. Let's go. All right, so wait, Dr- Dre Gaines and Ray Gaines. Ray of Gaines. Ray, Ray of Gaines. Ray. 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 Ray of Gaines. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is Dre. Ain't no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All righty. Um, so I just wanted to um, touch base on uh, your guys' partnership. I know you guys do a lot of stuff together. Do um, you want to go into it? I can start it off. So, like, last December, last December, we both started personal training, like mm-hmm. doing some online business stuff mm-hmm. within ourselves. We started programming for kids around Montclair State's campus. And then we... We're fraternity brothers. We looked at each other's Instagram. We were both doing pretty much the same thing. Mm-hmm. We hit each other up. We were like, why are we doing this separately? Yeah. Power in numbers, mm-hmm. how we always say it. So we joined forces. We originally, our first business was Short Strength and Power. We made in... Started it all. Yeah, January of last year. I think it was January 3rd of last year. We started Short Strength and Power. Mm-hmm. It was pretty much just an online programming business with some merch. We, we dropped a couple lines of merch. We dropped some tank tops. We dropped some shirts. We made some quarter, um, some sweaters. Mm. Shit was a f- fucking process. Bro. Yeah, like, it, w- it was a learning experience more than anything because we are both exercise science majors, mm-hmm. no business experience. It was kind of just us diving headfirst into the business world, gotcha. seeing idea, what though. it was all about. Like we got our own LLC, mm-hmm. we got our own website. So it was, it was definitely more than anything. It was a learning experience. Okay, wasn't the most successful endeavor, but we definitely took pieces from that. And coming soon, we have something in the works. But, uh, we also did like a, a, a giveaway. We did like a giveaway with programs, and we had like everyone enter mm-hmm. uh, uh, the ten week challenge. Ten week yeah. challenge, and yeah. it went really well. So I mean, we got a lot of shouts lot out of, to Paul. He took first place. Yeah, Paul <laughs> took first place. Yeah. But uh, yeah. that yeah, that's our that's our designer. Oh, that's nice, yeah, man. Paul Warren, though, he made our logo. Shouts out to him. Shout out to Paul Warren. <laughs> did you guys, uh, when did you guys start this? Was it like... Yeah, it was in, well, we, we basically had the idea for a while, but we didn't really take full force of it and actually take it seriously mm-hmm. until about just like a whole year ago. Okay. Actually, it was like two years ago, bro. No, it was a year ago. It was, it was a year, a year ago, ago t- like around this time. Around this time. January mm-hmm. of last year. And okay. basically like... When we first started it, we were we did a lot of research on like how to actually run a successful business, but we had no like mm. no experience whatsoever. But I'm glad we did it because now we actually know how to run a successful yeah. business and stuff like that. So yeah, no, it's always great to have like that kind of experience be like like in your belt. Like um, I know like doing this podcast, it's almost like a business thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I'm like I'm not profiting in like like anything off of that. I just like not to be. Yet. Yeah, well, not yeah, yet. yeah, not, not yet. yet. But I mean, like, it's just something that I have, and it's like in my name, and it's also something that I feel like I can grow at some point and make yeah. and make some money off of it. Um, yeah, but like, sure. it's all it's all a work in process. It's you know, yeah, it and, takes time. And how I do everything, whether it's fitness, whether it be school, whether it be our business, it's like you got to dive head in head first. Like, yeah, there's no way you're gonna learn. You're not gonna learn. I put it on my story today. There's no way you're gonna learn from the sidelines. Yeah, you're not gonna learn watching over somebody's shoulder. They're like, hmm, what's their next move? What should I do next? Yeah. It's like, at the end of the day, if you don't do it, you're never going to know. Exactly. And like being in, like having your own thing right now, like actually staying consistent with like we do this consistently. Mm-hmm. That just that that consistently will flow like it will just yeah. it'll come. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like your breakthrough will eventually come. Yeah. And, and you'll get like followers in the process exactly. as well. too. Yeah. People just give up on, on what, yeah. what they're going after. It's all about organic growth. This kid taught me more than anything. It's consistency, consistency, consistency. <laughs> the way this man gets after it every day motivates me. And that's how I live my life is 
you shouldn't be watching other people, but you should be surrounding yourself with people who want to be successful. Exactly. I yeah. wake up every morning. This kid hasn't went to sleep yet. <laughs> I'm, I come downstairs. I'm like, Bren, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better get to sleep. You got work in two hours. And he's like, man, I'm just going to stay up. <laughs> and like, that's the type of grind I want to be around for the rest of my life because those are the people who aren't going to hold you down. When you want to go, you know, I'm not going to go to the gym today. I have this motherfucker behind me going, yo, we're going to the gym today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's constructive criticism, but like yeah. at the end of the day, we're so young. Why mm-hmm. not get after it now? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. Why, like, why are you not chasing your dreams at this age? Why like, be 30 with nothing? Yeah, well, yeah I posted something <laughs> today. Like, I'm not trying to be 30 with nothing. You get what I'm saying? Dude, like, if you have an interest, express it. Just express do it. it as, as much as you can. Like, you have like some sort of talent. Exactly. You just you just 100%. go in, yeah, and do it. I mean, like you're a big fitness guy. I can yeah. see you like doing like all that fitness, like just expressing your fitness yeah. on social media and making like a business yeah. out of it. And, My passion. And like when you're doing this, like what, what we have going on, like what we have going on right now, we're all doing something different, mm-hmm. but we all collide together. And like just being. Just having that that entrepreneurship, being around yeah. other entrepreneurs yeah. and other people who are after the same goals and aspirations in life, you're going to be successful. Yeah, and it's going to help you out in the long run because, I mean, yeah, yeah, with this podcast, like, that's all I've been talking about with, like, interviews I've been having. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like people don't, don't really care much about, like... Um, like what you do like every i mean like more like um like like what your job is like they want to know like what what you do like besides your job what kind of hustle you have after your job because i mean like those are like the most well-rounded people you know and it's what sets you apart from the other people exactly is like i just told you the other day we were talking in the kitchen you were talking about how all your interviewers talking about your podcast and it's the same thing i'll go for a pt interview Mm-hmm. anywhere and they're not talking about my prior gym experience mm-hmm. because look you're going for an interview to be a personal trainer no crap you've been a personal trainer before. <laughs> yeah they don't care mm-hmm. yeah. but it's like i talk about short strength and they're like oh he can be his own boss yeah. and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day in the in the personal training world and a lot of the worlds mm-hmm. is they don't want somebody they need to monitor Mm-hmm. They want somebody they can throw into the ring and, and that's going to succeed on yeah. their own yeah. who can be independent. And that's what sets you apart. That's what sets me. That's what sets Brand mm-hmm. apart from a lot of the other candidates when we go for jobs is we can be our own bosses. Yeah. yeah, We have that capability to put our heads down, get our work done, and we don't need somebody over our shoulder like, <laughs> Dre, did you make those 100 calls today? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I did that two hours ago. Because yeah. I don't need yeah. you to tell me to do anything because I'm yeah. going to do that because I want to be successful. Yeah, you can be independent and also be like a great team player at the same time with like what you guys are doing with the, like what I'm doing, you know. So, yeah, I definitely encourage it for for exactly. for anybody because it sets you apart from everybody else exactly. i mean everyone is getting an education at this time exactly. you know like like it's very it's very common and people are doing certificates like after after college that's something that's setting them apart yeah. and then they're also going like ahead and doing all these entrepreneurship things and being on, in front of camera and expressing like their thoughts and things like that and that sets them apart right from the, from, yeah exactly. so just keep you, you just got to keep being well-rounded and not being just a number in this world, you Literally, know. Exactly. That's what we I'm trying just, to tell you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, bro. We were we were sitting. Me and Brent just be be uh, shooting the shooting the shit. Sometimes mm-hmm. we drove over um, Upper Montclair. We were looking at the overlook over the city, just mm-hmm. looking at the big old world we live in. And it's like, Crazy. why are we gonna want to be just another number in the system? And it's Dog. at the end of the day, like I I had this realization probably like a month ago. Mm-hmm. I've been going through college off memorization like you go into classes all you're worried about is the a Mm -hmm. you don't you don't care what you're learning in class and at the end of the day yeah i'm gonna get my degree i have a three five gpa i've made dean dean's list multiple times i'm gonna get my my degree i'm gonna be a physical therapist but at the end of the day do i just want to be a physical therapist or do i want to be that physical therapist where it's like you Mm -hmm. get injured and your mom's like oh you gotta go see dre he knows what he's Mm -hmm. like he He's a specialist. Like he knows why. Why do I want to be just another number in the mm-hmm. system of the healthcare world so, yeah. when I could recreate the healthcare world? When I could turn that sh- bullshit upside down? Mm-hmm. Work there's for so, yourself. There's so many issues nowadays when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to wellness and fitness that we have that nobody wants to address because everybody just wants to read out of a textbook. Mm-hmm. Everybody just wants to be the same. Self education will make you a fortune. Yeah, okay. Exactly. This is something that I try to teach a lot of people is group group economics mm-hmm. like. 
I don't know if you guys know about group group stutter after me. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you guys know about group economics, but like it's basically us guys like working together, like working as a team. Like that, you have to understand. That's why all these entrepreneurs are so rich, bro. Strength they numbers. get a team mm-hmm. and they work together towards the same goal. They have the same vision and they get it done. They don't stop. Yeah. And that's what people like. I see so many people have the best idea, business ideas, the best. I'm mm-hmm. like, you try it for three months and then you don't see a profit, so you quit. Yeah. Like it just don't make any sense. Like you, you like people don't understand that next day you can see a lot of money. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's yeah. crazy. Like people, your breakthrough could be tomorrow. Well, let's let. But you gave up today. We can talk about that. Like Brent, when you were starting the forex thing. You, well, first of all, you quit the first time you joined. Okay. Second of all, how many accounts have you blown? When I first started, dog, I don't even want to talk about it. Exactly. Account after account after account. It took me seven months, like seven months of just consistency to actually learn this shit. And then once you finally get it, anything, bro, once you finally stay consistent with whatever you're doing, your breakthrough will come. You'll actually get it. Mm-hmm. And it'll be successful. Yeah. And that's what it's all about is it's strength in numbers, but it's also perseverance it's i make i go to work and no i don't want to be a commercial trainer for the rest of my life but anything i do i put my all to so it's like i make cold calls all day Mm -hmm. it's like members new members yeah everything like that trying to bring in new clientele to the gym you know how many times a day i get hung up on how many times a day i pick up that phone somebody picks up the phone and say hey i'm dre knowles from crunch fitness wayne yeah but guess what that 98th call somebody wants to listen to what i have to say they're in the next day. I sell. Mm-hmm. Okay. I sell. I saw this one thing. Uh, lastly, to touch up on like that whole entrepreneurship thing, like making calls and stuff. I saw this one thing. It was like calling to push out your product, whatever it may be. Like when, say myself, I, I make 10 calls and have nine people buy my product, but you make 100 calls and you have 10 people buy your product. You won. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The more work, the more like... The, it's the rule of sevens. That's what I always fall by. Like when he's talking about products and stuff, mm-hmm. every seven people that you properly pitch your, 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 business, your to. business to. And, and a no is not a no. A no is just not right now. So exactly. Yeah. We, we're taught that all the time in the personal training world. A maybe is a maybe later. Yep. A maybe is a maybe later. You, think about you talk it. about everybody it. wants fitness. Everybody yeah. needs to get in shape. And mm-hmm. you plant that seed in their brain. So like what we do at the gym is we'll give seed. somebody a kickstart. It's called a kickstart. It's a free personal training session. No charge. I make no money. The gym makes no money. You come in. You take one session with me. We talk about some goals you have. I'm going to kick your butt in that workout. I don't care who you are. I'm a great personal trainer. I know my worth at the end of the day. That's one of the biggest things in the business world. Know your worth. And I'll put them through a workout. And it might be a money thing. It might be a I'm not sure yet thing. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, maybe I'll think about it. But I planted that seed. So they know a month down the line. They're still fat. They're still overweight. <laughs> they're still, they don't know. They're not where they want to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, crap. That, that kid, Dre, kicked my butt a month ago. He really knew what he was talking about, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to give him a call. And I've had that happen before. I've sent text out months ago that I hear back from today. Oh, yo, are you still offering personal training, blah, blah, blah? Can I, can I hop in your schedule? Because they know what I'm bringing to the table. They just weren't ready to accept it yet. So a maybe is always a maybe later. That's the biggest lesson I've ever learned. Uh, wait, I have a question, guys. Did you guys see that whole, like, we were talking about it, bro. The whole debacle with, like, the whole Jake Paul thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, dude. my God. That dude is a clown. Uh, <laughs> nah, for real, though? Oh, wait, so wait, how did it start? Oh, oh, we, we got a question. Oh. A question. Let's hear it. How do, we, how do you get motivated to work out? Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's a great question because the answer is you don't. I don't mm-hmm. wake up every morning. Like, I love to work out. That's my passion. I love to be in the gym. I love to lift weights. But no, not every day I wake up and I'm like, I want to go torture my muscles in the gym for two hours. But it's about having that passion. You have a goal. It might be, I want to lose 15 pounds. I might not want to have this muffin top. Mm -hmm. I want to have biceps when I squeeze my arm. Anything you think about that, you'll go to the gym because you know, if you're not going to do it, your biceps not going to grow on its own. You're not going to lose that 15 pounds on your own. Mm -hmm. So the answer is you don't stay motivated. You should have passion. You stay consistent. Okay. I'm gonna drop yeah. you. I'm gonna drop everybody a quick gem, real quick. Hope that sacrifice, sacrifice what you love, or later on, 
what you love will become your sacrifice. That's a quick little gem for y'all. Hey, like, hey, that was some fire. He dropped some, he dropped some heat on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this guy, Jake Paul, is a genius. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Let's get let's get into Jake Paul. Like Jake Paul is a genius. So so did it start off with like him with like the flag like going like can't, mm-hmm. no it started bef- like there's it something before, before Bro, it. Bro, it's been it's this, been going on for. I'll tell you why Jake Paul is such a genius, yo. Like it. it it, it's uh, to to be real with you. We're we're talking about consistency now and like following Appreciate your dreams. It. He started what he was what he's doing YouTube whatever since he was like young, like fourteen mm-hmm. years old, and just never stopped. And then he like over time grew his fame. And then like the whole boxing thing, it grew up. He he didn't want to be a YouTuber. Whatever. He's gonna touch money forever. He's rich as hell. But like he is the biggest clown in the whole game he's, right now. He's Takashi six nine all over again. He's the yes. villain of the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what happens is. No, I won't say all exposure is good exposure, but all exposure is exposure. And that man will always have exposure because he knows how to get under people's skin. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. That's like the key to his whole agenda is he can say whatever he wants. Marketing. He can piss whoever he wants off. He can keep his cool at all times. Have you ever seen Jake Paul, Jake Paul in an interview? You can say anything to that guy. He's got an answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. And like he always has, he's always 10 steps ahead of the competition. You can say whatever you want against him. You can say he's going to get knocked out. But him fighting Conor McGregor, I love who, his who is not talking about him? Yeah. Who, we're talking about him right now. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. I love his thing. grind, bro. His grind is crazy. I mean, he Ten seems like a person ahead. that like wants to make it happen and, and anything that like he does. Yeah. But do, like, do you think that Conor McGregor just sees him as like another person? punk like yes. like on the internet like I, in the con like so like so like when conor mcgregor like, like posts like something like on like the on like social media or whatever and like there's comments like saying like bullshit do you think that conor mcgregor just sees uh jake paul as one of like those people who comment you know trash yeah well uh, that's what the that i i know jake paul is training very hard to be a boxer i mean but he hasn't been training l- such as long as conor mcgregor and dylan dan has been people. fighting yeah. exactly and it's kind of disrespectful me and Jerry talking about it's disrespectful yeah, yeah. but at the same time he's doing what he has to do to make sure his family's okay whatever he mean whatever it may be but he's just a genius for the way he does it and he's, he's creating generational wealth generational wealth bro generational. his family for like generations will be rich it's as good hell. and like the way like this is hilarious i saw it on snapchat today it was like basically how they're doing it is they're throwing shade on each other's families and girlfriends and stuff yeah. like they're posting like oh my God. Each it's the most disrespectful like, yeah. thing and so that's crazy and that's the craziest thing is there's just no boundaries mm-hmm. and with the internet nowadays there is literally no boundaries like he literally what do you think about it brendan um honestly like i want it I want to see it happen. Oh, so oh yeah. I mean, so fucking I mean, bad. honestly, like I just want to see Conor, a uh, Conor McGregor in action again. Like, like he's my boy. Like I, like I like him as a fighter. Like he used to be. Like I'm not, I'm not really big on cocky people, but he's like honestly like a pretty entertaining cocky person, and it's almost going like uh humble now against his like former cockiness yeah. you know you yeah, know what i mean yeah, so yeah. i kind of want to see that happen i think it has a great storyline i'm all about the storylines okay. when it comes to fighting so uh i really do want to see it happen i think jake paul is doing a great thing i, I want him to keep going because it's funny as fuck, funny as fuck. <laughs> and, yeah. and there's no and there's no lose situation for him he's yeah. making money he mm-hmm. loses yo conor it's mcgregor's clout. been fighting since he was four years old <laughs> like it's not really like anybody's expecting jake paul to get in the ring and knock K- conor mcgregor out. he's gonna knock but him out bro. if he yeah. gets in the ring and knocks him out bro nobody's they're gonna take over the world yeah. it's, over, it's over i'm yeah. telling you right now i know just by the way things are going right now yeah jake paul is gonna win that fight and he is going to be the man of the fucking world you think zero cat bro i just know the way the way he's getting inside of their heads i know how that works on the football field whatever it may be like in anything when someone gets inside of your head and they dig deep i could tell it's eating them up because they're fighting back if they're humble and like they know they're great you get what i'm saying they'll mm-hmm. not do anything they'll be like all right i'll take the fight but one they're dodging the fight yeah two they're firing back there's i think they're scared <laughs> i really do i don't think it's as much scared as they're getting so far under their skin yeah. because it's like you imagine having me be the biggest clown on the internet and one day I'm like, Man, I want a one on one with LeBron James on the basketball court. 
Yeah, no ever. matter if LeBron James knows he's about to smoke me 21 to 0, that's so disrespectful that I even have that opportunity yeah. that somebody's going to pay me hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay LeBron James at basketball when I have no business being on the same but court. I don't as know. Man. Like, for it to be a boxing fight, I feel like it can be, like, it, it can happen. I mean, like, if it can happen. It's, it's a different one sport. Punch, it's, dog. One, yeah. one punch. punch. Knock someone out. Yeah. One punch. Oh, well, yeah. When we see Jake Paul, we did Nate Robinson. Like, it was just crazy, you know? Just Slept him. him. Yeah. Slept him. But, like, honestly, like, like you can say, um, you know, LeBron James versus you, you know, 21-0 on the basketball court. But this is, like... Not uncharted territory for Connor, but like it's like he's not having that much experience with with boxing. I think he has as much experience in boxing as uh, Jake Paul, which means I think that it can happen because they both have Absolutely. like that like seniority of boxing, like like kind of have like the same thing going. And you know, numbers don't lie. Jake Paul's yeah. two and zero. Oh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> Connor McGregor's own one in the boxing. Game. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay, so I mean, like, but if it was UFC, like if oh, Jake Paul, oh, yeah. It's, that, a, it's a different that, story. That would I feel like that would be like well, the, that's kind of like what's LeBron going James. on with um the other brother Logan Paul and Mayweather. I think that's <laughs> I think that's exhibition. That can't. Be. I don't care if it's exhibition. That's insane. You're getting in the ring with the right. probably debatable the best boxer of all time. He can die. He could die in the ring. He could <laughs> literally not come out of that ring. That he is a die. scary sight. Have you seen how fast Mayweather's hands are? Yeah, yeah. But uh, like, lo- but like, look at Logan though. He's like towering over. He's Floyd. towering. Over he has. It's one he thing. Is like what six three two yeah. fifteen like. Yeah. Mayweather's five, what, five, six, 140? Mm-hmm. Pack a punch. I don't know. The thing is, like, I think that fight is, is more likely going to happen, right? Oh, that, one's already, that one's already locked in. Oh, really? February. And we don't know if it's an exhibition or not? Mm-mm. I think it might be. I don't know. That's a, that just don't sound right. Right? I mean, like... Are, are they even? The, they're not. They're not even the same weight class. Not the same weight class. That's got to be an exhibition. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know how they would make it happen, but all I know is I heard about the price of like what each boxer is getting, uh-huh. and Mayweather is being compensated a lot nicer than Logan, which I agree yeah. with. Yeah. You know, but also, I'm not getting in that ring <laughs> if Mayweather what? is making millions more than me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I, like. I think it might be an exhibition, but like Probably. I don't know. Um, you think that uh, Mayweather has the strength to like absolutely like knock like not like knock him out, but like just like make Logan Paul shit his pants? Um, I mean, I, I mean, would, I would say Tyson. Ty- my, my, like Mike Tyson. Oh well, that's it. He's a. I I don't even think Mike Tyson is human. I just he's gonna get him. yo. I just wait for it. When Mike Tyson gets back in the ring, people are gonna die. <laughs> because I don't know if you know, they used to have to sedate that man when he used to get in the ring. Yeah. Like, I, at his prime, animal. when he was knocking people off, eating people's ears, they used to have to give him sedatives so he wouldn't kill people when he went in the ring. Different and they're not giving him any sedatives nowadays. Wow. So I'm scared for whoever gets in the ring with that man. It's it's going to be like You know that. what? Mike Tyson, if you're watching this, I'll beat your ass. Yo, Mike Tyson, I want the fight. Oh, Give me the card. <laughs> I will die for that check. Imagine he sees <laughs> DMs me. <laughs> Imagine he takes a video. Him. He's like, "Yo, you know what?" <laughs> <laughs> he shows up to the house, <laughs> knocks on our door, just eats. Landlord's all like, "What? What was this guy doing here?" Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Rent's not being paid this month. <laughs> yeah, he said, "Uh, oh, we have fatality." Or it could be paid off because then you get the fight with. I just buy the house. <laughs> <laughs> just buy the house. Just buy the house. That's funny. Um, but you know, uh, I really hope the Jake Paul th- uh, and, and Conor McGregor fight happens. Uh, but I don't know if it's, it's going to be, be anytime movie. soon, though. I feel like that'd be like a 2022. It's thing. Gonna, oh, it's going to be a process of just like any questions on the on the gram or any? Uh, no, no questions okay. on the gram right now. But Yo. you guys here, do you know who Eddie Hall and um the Mountain are? You know the Mountain Thor? From- I've heard, yeah, I've heard the Mountain. The Mountain from um Game of Thrones. He's the world's strongest man. Yes. Well, yeah. he was the world's strongest man. Yeah. Eddie Hall, another f- former world's strongest man. Yo, they're having a boxing match in 2021. Oh. Two of the biggest people in the world. That's good. <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, you can be, like, as big and tough as you can, but I don't know they're if... They're both cutting a lot of weight. Okay. They both lost over 100 okay. pounds. But, like, what I'm trying to say is, like, no matter how big you are, I feel like everyone's head 
is fragile. Like, oh, like, yeah, definitely. And like, but their necks are like... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, neck. yeah. Yeah. But, like, I'm just trying to say that if, 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 like, a big guy like that, like, hits another big guy in the head, I feel yeah. like everyone's head is... So fragile, bro. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel you like... Know how dumb Mayweather is? He's getting dumber and dumber every time he steps in the ring because yeah. he gets hit in the head. Mm-hmm. He's got a mushy-ass brain. <laughs> But you can't even read a book. I'm surprised. Like, I mean, like T- Tyson isn't really that. I mean, I think Joe Rogan actually says that like he's an intelligent man. But I mean, Joe Rogan says that everybody is intelligent, though. But um, I don't know. I feel like Mike Tyson is doing pretty good for his age right now. And he's bro. He I, if you saw his training videos, he looks ridiculous. He's starting. He looks like he's in his prime brain. again, and it's it's yeah. scary. It's mm-hmm. it's like I don't think because of his mental health issues they ever let him reach his full potential mm-hmm. not saying he's going to be prime mike mike tyson in the ring but i think people are going to be very surprised very <laughs> surprised as to yeah. the damage he does to the next person's face damn damn wait uh, you think wait you think mike tyson's getting back in the ring or he is getting back in the ring i mean i saw him do that that uh, exhibition with Ro- roy jones or i think that's, that's his so i think he plans on getting you like really back, back in the ring think so he's old as hell i wouldn't want to fight do you want to fight mike tyson he's gonna be rocky six basically yeah. uh, they if he does it they got to make a movie of it i'll shoot it oh they're definitely gonna. that would be a fire movie oh wait you want to know what um i thought this early um earlier in the week jake paul reminds me of um clubber lang's like antics like so not like antics, but like what he's been doing. So, you, like you guys seen Rocky Three, right? Mm-hmm. And you know how like Clubber Lang was like, um, like hitting on uh, Rocky's wife, mm-hmm. and then he and then he uh, assaulted uh, um, Mick. Yo. So that's basically what Jake Paul has been doing. He's been he, he's been hitting on uh, like uh, Conor McGregor's wife in a way, social media, and he has assaulted Conor McGregor's uh, coach. Well, that you saw you saw the, the um, pay, Facetime the, video, right? Yeah, and he was Paul. on Facetime. He was with on his Facetime girl. with her, with yeah. her, his wife. Well, First no, all, Savannah Montana. Oh, Savannah Montana. Yeah, and fo- the, and only followed his wife. Only follows his and wife. Dylan Danis's wife. And like, Dylan Danis's wife. He's yeah. the biggest clown in the world. Oh yeah, I love it. I love, I that love shit. it more than anything. <laughs> Honestly, like it, like I don't. I've been off social media a lot, trying to like get my brain right. But I will tune into Jake Paul. Yeah, but it reminds me. It just reminds me of Rocky that's, Three, like that's that whole that like that. like that whole thing. He because might. like it's like it's the same thing. That, it's the same shit that's happening. Imagine a oh movie gosh. about Jake Paul. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that would be a comedy. Wait, hold on. That's a that brings up a pretty uh, cool question. Who do you think, like in the future, are they going to make a movie about, like, like, like a celebrity? Uh, I mean, back uh, back in the day. Okay, okay, so what movies have they we talk made? Sports or like just celebrities? Just celebrities in general. Celebrities who has like a good chance of getting a movie, or who do you think will get a movie in the future? Some I mean, crazy th- stories out there. Think nowadays. about think about like the movies that they have already made yeah, about like about hero. celebrities in the past. Like they made a movie about Alfred Hitchcock. They've made a movie about. Um, Did they ever come out with a Nipsey Hussle movie? No, they're making one. Oh, that movie's gonna be fire. Oh. You know Nipsey Hussle? No. Oh, uh, he's just like he's a rapper, but he, he died off. in twenty. Oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Died twenty. Twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. I think. Twenty eighteen. L. A. The amount of like community work he did and investing too, like talking about like Brent's forex stuff and stuff. He promoted mm-hmm. so much for these inner city kids to find that outlet to invest mm-hmm. in themselves, and he changed, he changed so many lives. people's lives. And if I were to think of one, I guess they're already making the movie, but one like influential that. person I want to look up to and who I think the next generation should really try to strive to be like would be Nipsey Hussle. That's a good answer. Nipsey okay. Hussle, 100%. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, that I brought up uh, like other people. So like NWA, they made a movie about NWA. Or LeBron. Yeah. So, um, LeBron with all his like accolades within making, what's that school called he has going on in um, oh. Akron? Um, the Zero School or something like that. It has, has some type of cool name, but I just think anybody like I forgot what it was that in the world nowadays. I like athletes who are really using <laughs> their voice mm-hmm. to get back. You know who I could see them making a movie about? Colin Kaepernick. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. I That's could see a good that. One. I think that I could be a good one. Is because not even the aspect of him on the field. Because what he had like two good Wait, seasons. Didn't they make a movie about Tim Tebow? 
No. I would not I watch, watch, watch I would not watch that movie. Johnny Manziel. <laughs> <laughs> On, uh, it's called uh, uh, The I Promise School. I like the that. I Promise. Yeah. I knew it was some dope name, yeah. but it, bro, million, uh, hundreds and hundreds of kids in the inner city. No, no cost to them. But I don't know. I've, I don't really think that there have been like like there's been movies about athletes like like big time athletes like there's like there's been musicians like artists yeah. like nwa rocket man michael J- oh, no not michael jackson james brown yeah, yeah. i feel like it's more like you know the 30 for 30s yeah that you'll see on espn mm-hmm. that's like more those. what athletes get nowadays but yeah. I, I think they a life do. for like a football life yeah like, like a that. lifetime movie but like i think they deserve their own spotlight because at the end of the day like sports is half the battle mm-hmm. they had to come through so much adversity to be where they are most kids like I know kids have been drafted in the NFL. I've played with kids in high school who've gotten drafted, and their story does not start with the field. Yeah, and I think more people need to see that. Have you ever seen All because American? The, yeah, movies. All American. No. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Yes. That has it's a show. Yeah, that has the best, the best story. It's such such a good story to follow. If you have Netflix, definitely watch that. All American. Yeah. All right. Such a good show. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in the future they'll be making more um, like bio- uh, uh, biographies, movies of like sports. I mean, I feel like I feel like um, people are lacking um, like creativity in like movies and things like that. So uh, yeah, I, f- I feel like a lot of people like like now they've been making a lot of movies about artists and yeah. and yeah. things like that. So I think biographies are going to be. I mean, because every idea has been recycled yeah. a million times and, in the movie and industry. superheroes. I feel like is going to be like the future. So I think like like athletes and uh, superheroes are going to be like the future of of movies because I feel yeah. like I feel like there's lack. You can of only make so many romantic comedies. I with think the same there's plot. definitely going to be a movie about COVID. Oh, 100%. oh, bro! Pandemic something, you know, bro! It's yeah. it's going you know off, that yeah. movie and we're gonna going look back at it and we're gonna be like, yo, <laughs> that shit sucks. That movie is going to be fire. Yo, you know what's gonna look like uh, though? It's gonna. All right, so have you ever seen like those like movies and like I don't know? I already know, know what you're like, talking about. Like in Mexico, where it's like it's like a it's like a yellow. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like <laughs> everything is gonna be like like a hint of yellow. Like the scene's gonna oh be. Oh god, it's gonna be like that movie it's Aliens like, versus what is it? Aliens versus. Predators. Yeah, there's gonna be flies everywhere. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna look so. Yeah, we're gonna look back. We're gonna be like, yo, we were just chilling. Yeah. In the house. Whoa, I don't do that. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> yeah. And that is what special effects are for. <laughs> um. So, but nah, I think. Oh uh, like, no, I will not, Alex. Corona. That that movie about coronavirus should be crazy. Yeah, no. Uh, there's gonna be. I think there's gonna be a lot of like um, making it in life movies during COVID because I feel like a lot of people have time right now. Like a lot of people had time, and a lot of people yeah. were able to get money from the government, so they use that to invest. That's what I've been doing for this podcast. Like yeah. I had so much time, and I used the money that like the government gave me to yeah. invest it into all this shit. Yeah, all, all this, this shit. Stuff. That's and, as you should. But mad people. Oh, I'm gonna get the new uh, PS5 with I'm the unemployment check. I'm go, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go freaking surfing. I'm gonna go on vacation with my unemployment check. Do you guys not? A lot of people. I was just talking about this with my my um friend Isaiah. Is do you not notice you're taking out of your unemployment for the rest of your life? Uh-huh. Like when you're when they're collecting these checks, I didn't collect one check because I'm not saying you shouldn't because mm-hmm. people need to live, people need to buy their. Not gonna lie, I collected too. Yeah, and people need to <laughs> like it's yeah. it's sustaining life while we're in this pandemic. But these people are gonna be 50, 40 years old, needing to go on real unemployment, and they depleted their funds. Yeah, mm-hmm. because they wanted to have fun at. 19 20 years old with a couple grand because they didn't go out and work for a couple weeks bro Mm -hmm. i was in fedex grinding during the Mm -hmm. pandemic trying to get a check yeah and at the end of the day you guys are messing up your future god forbid you need unemployment in the future because i pray that you guys are successful with your endeavors in the future but just depleting your your future funds for what for a vacation that's going to last a week for a PS5 that you're gonna have fun with for maybe a year before you realize that video games are yeah. not the end old be all and you need to have a real life. <laughs> invest it. Invest it. Yeah, invest, invest it. Invest it back into yourself. Exactly. Bro. Yeah. I mean, like it took like about two thousand dollars to like put all yeah. this up, and like I mean, we're we're on episode fifteen. I continue yeah. going. I keep I, and I continue grinding, and that's also like one motivation that I have with this podcast is that why I put, waste it? You I, get put, what I'm I put so much money into this. 
I'm not going to stop. I'm going to nah. keep going. Exactly. exactly, bro. I said it all the time. Like, I already put so much effort into what I'm doing now. Exactly. I can't quit. Yeah. Like, there's no other option. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, even with the fitness stuff, like, if I look back, I keep a pic. He knows. He makes fun of me all the time because I keep Fat Dre as my screensaver. Mm-hmm. I look back. If I woke up one day, well, one thing is we had this talk the other day. But if I woke up one day and I looked like that again, I would feel so bad about myself. Mm-hmm. And then I let myself, because I know now all the bad habits, all the lazy days that fed into that, just like all the bad habits, all the lazy days that feed into you not being successful. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. But on the other note, you know what we should talk about? Remember, Brent, you were like, if you created a successful business, would you tear it all down to build it again? Yeah, this is, a, this is a, I put some on my story. I said... If you, if you built a multi-million dollar business, would you start it all over again, get rid of that business, and build it all over again just to prove to people that you could do it again? That's 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 Hard. that's very risky. That's, yeah. I mean, that's I already made it. Like, I, I already made it. You know, it's just that was like, my thing. Is I I as my per, like my personal belief, I don't need to prove anything to anybody. And if I put the effort in, I created my own business. I deserve to feed into the wealth that I created for myself. I I did that. Yeah. I don't think I need to prove to anybody that I can do it again. But I think Brent will have a little different of an opinion. Yeah. yeah. What would, do you think? Yeah, I love I love proving people wrong. Like that's what I love. But you've but you've worked up to that point. Like so like I kind of see it as like in a way where it's like, yeah, I'm grinding right now. I'm putting in all the effort right now. So I can chill. Yeah, so I can chill. And then you and then you lose it and then it's just like, well, fuck. it's it's almost okay, it's almost like when you're playing 2K and you have your my player, and then that shit gets corrupted, and and or like or or like your girlfriend like deletes everything, and yeah, she, you know you know how hard that is, yeah, how hard you worked for that, yeah, no, I get that. I and know. what I said to him is, I would never tear down something I worked so hard to create, I know, yeah. but I definitely would have the hunger to go open another business and prove to people I could do it all over again in that aspect. That's another question, though. That's I would do that. I wouldn't tear my own business down. I th- Yeah, it's definitely a personal opinion thing. I, I saw on my poll, yeah. I, had, I think I had 18 people say yes and like six people said no. But I asked a few people why they said it, and it was the same reasons. Like Some people love just proving, proving people, people wrong. wrong. I love that shit. And that's a Feel great me. driving force. I love that, but at, the, at the end of the day... I feel that there's intrinsic and there's external motivation. And for myself, I'm a very internally motivated person. Nobody has to tell me to get up, go to work at 6 a.m. Nobody's got to tell me yeah. uh, it's 1 a.m. I got to go to the gym. Like, no, that's that comes from my internal belief. Comes from the heart. And I feel like you wanting to rebuild your own business over again comes from a type of external motivation. But what if it's uncontrollable? So, like... You well, that's a saying? different story. Like that's what that's kind of where my question is going. Is going like okay. if it's uncontrollable, so to the point where okay, you go bankrupt. Now you got to do that shit all over again. So Elon Musk, he went bankrupt. But, Very good example. And you know mm-hmm. why he went bankrupt because he was opening up uh, the NASA thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why he did that is because he knew he could do it all over again. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You just got to have that burning desire. Clear yeah. eyes, full heart, can't lose. I don't know. I feel like if I'm a per, uh, like, um, I feel like that would be a great question to ask someone that's like a yeah. trust fund baby. Like, yeah. like if they built something because like they're like they're like a Donald Trump. Donald Trump got like handed a million dollars to like start like his real estate business or whatever. Um, that's that's a hefty amount of money back then in like the eighties or seventies yeah. or whatever. So. Asking Donald Trump that question, I feel like because like people are gonna be like, oh well, you got handed this money to grow it and everything like that. But what happens if you just start from nothing? You know, I don't know. From someone that's starting from yeah. nothing, I don't know if I can do it. Someone that has get- already had money, I feel like they are trying to. I, I think th- they have the desire to prove to to other people that no, I didn't do this because my uh, dad gave it to me. I did. I, I can do it because I can do it, yeah. you know. So I'm, we got to get Grant Cardone on this podcast, then. <laughs> Dog, yeah. But I, I I feel like at the end of the day, it's situational. 
Because, yes, if something happened, the economy struck down and your business, by natural causes, gets torn to the ground. Yeah, of course I would try to build it back up. You of would. course I would try to go back at it. That's, and that's 20 push-ups. You said try twice, bro. We don't try around here. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. Oh, <laughs> we got to do 20 push-ups. <laughs> One, two, two three, three, four, four five, six, six seven, eight, 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 nine, push ten, ups. 11, <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Moral of the story, we don't. T word. <laughs> we don't T word. I would build that business all over again. I would be successful again. And I would make a Fortune 500 company all over again. How big is your pump right now? Oh, my titties are huge. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of titties, no, I'm playing. <laughs> all nice. right. And I'm a little sweaty. Yeah, so what's the next topic here? Uh, oh, so oh, we're going to talk about worst hookup stories. Worst oh. hookup stories? I, I worst hookup to story. end off this call, we should all give our worst hookup story. And yeah. then we'll leave them to suspense to the next topic. And the next topic uh -huh. will relate to this last topic. Okay, okay. Oh, shit. So Wait. who wants to go? I, I can go first. Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I the worst hookup story. All right. Let me, let me think for a second. I have a hookup. I have a bad hookup story, but I'm uh, afraid to say it because I know <laughs> this girl's going to watch it. <laughs> she, uh, she knows who she is. Oh, my God. Well, I'll, okay. I'll tell mine. I don't. So. Okay. It's going to get loud. I'm scared to tell. So me. yeah, now I'm kind of scared to tell this one. I hope I hope <laughs> the girl's not on this live right now. We're just hook up stories. But anyways, so it was my third night in college. Uh huh. No, not even <laughs> third night in college. Yeah. And my boy, who goes to Columbia, was like, "Uh, you want to come to the frat house at Columbia? Get lit." And, oh, God, those push-ups made me out of breath. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's the push-ups. Yeah. But <laughs> I was supposed to go there, but my roommate at the time at Montclair was like, there's a phone party in the quad tonight. Can you come with me and my girl's friend? I'm like, all right, what does the friend look like? She He shows me a picture. It's like this big. Let me just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it right there. But anyway, so I'm like, F that. I'm going to Columbia. Like, I'm not going to third wheel for the whole night. I'm walking down the hole. And my roommate's girl and this baddie comes walking down the hole. And I, I go to Gabe, my roommate at the time. I'm like, is that her friend? And he's like, oh, uh, yeah, I didn't know she was coming. And I turned right around. I had my bags packed. I said, all right, we're going back. I stayed at Montclair that night. Went to the phone party. We're drinking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get in the phone party. We start hooking up. <laughs> Whatever We come back to my room We drink a little bit more Getting frisky My boy's <laughs> hooking up With his girl on the bed Oh god I start <laughs> I start hooking up With my girl on the bed I go Yeah Well we start doing stuff I go yo You wanna Pop the question She goes Uh I don't know uh, And we kept We kept hooking up I left it You know it's our first night I met her uh, I'm, a, I'm a gentleman I left it Start hooking up again. She's real into it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Moving in. Ah, I got this. Bro, I asked again. I go, yo, you want it? She's like, no. But she's into it the whole time. So I'm confused because like, you know the vibe. Like if a girl's <laughs> not really into it, you leave it alone. I would have been like, all right, you can leave, blah, blah, blah. But she's into it still. We start hooking up again. I'm like, this is weird. I left it. Didn't ask for the rest of the night. We ended up hooking. I'm not going to speak on anything else we did out of respect. But... <laughs> Did not do the S word. Did not do the S word. Uh -huh. <laughs> she leaves. It's pitch black in the room. I go to the bathroom to take a piss. I'm like a little drunk. Like my eyes are half closed. I come back into the room and my boy Gabe just starts cracking. His girl had left. He just starts cracking up at me. He looks at me. He just starts dying. I'm like, what are you laughing at, bro? Man, when I tell you I looked down, I had gray Adidas sweatshirts on. When I tell you the whole surface area of those sweatshirts wait, wait, wait. you had were, the gray sweatpants on though? i had the gray sweatshorts on when i tell you the whole surface area of those gray sweatshorts were red oh. the whole surface area of those gray no. sweatshorts were red and so that was why she did not want to have the no. s word that night and hey, to be real and ladies, ladies, and if you're long on, story short i dated her for a year ladies if you're on this call <laughs> it's okay it's natural i don't know what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> no, but ladies, if you are on this call, it is completely natural. 
But please tell. Please tell the man. Yeah. I would have been cool. Yeah. I would have been like, yo, we can we could do it. Yeah. Honestly, I'm down. I'll put a towel down. We're good. Yeah. But yeah, to not tell the person and just to act right, like bro. you weren't ready <laughs> is just a whole different story. Yeah. Because I came back from the bathroom and I had to were eighty dollar sweatshorts. I had to throw them in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that, but I looked down at my hand. My hand looked like I was like making meatballs or something and oh. some like bloody meat. Oh man. Like, it was Are you just, sure it wasn't you, bro? I'm positive. <laughs> unless unless I passed like three kidney stones in the process of us hooking up, I think it was her. Damn. Fair enough. Okay, so that was That's my story. That's a pretty fucked up story, Brendan. You're next. Okay, so um we going Yikes. so I go to this Yikes. part. No, first of all, first of all, uh, me and uh J- Jason, one other friend are uh, coming back from the uh, gay uh, parade or whatever, some some shit, yeah, like in uh, J- June or something yeah. like that. So, um, so I I head over to like you know like my hometown, whatever. Jason's like, oh, uh, there's a party over at this girl's house. Uh, the girl texts me. She's like, I want you to come, whatever. So then I get over there. I had a blast. It, like people were, you know, cool. I met a lot of new people, a lot of uh, fraternity kids and things like that. So, oh, like this girl hosted the party, whatever. And um, I mean, she was like super excited that I was like there and everything. And um, so, you know, we're we're downstairs in the basement again, a little, you know, a little friendly, a little touchy, whatever. And then um, she's like, okay, let's uh, let's go upstairs, whatever. So she goes to her room. Her her roommate is like passed out like in her bed and she's like oh we we have to go up in in the attic and i'm like well can you just like you know wake like, tell yeah up. wake your roommate up and tell her like to go or like sleep on the couch or whatever she's like no i don't want to do it. i don't want to do that um and i'm like okay well hopefully this attic got like a bed or some shit like that it was some ghetto <laughs> so i go up to the uh, to the third floor or no like the second floor and we go into this room dude empty ass room nah. dude and, and hardwood hardwood so then we start like you know hooking up whatever and dude i tell you my knees were on fire <laughs> it was, like it was so painful you were just like oh what are yeah you doing? i mean like i couldn't you know get anything off because like, i was just focused on the pain you're like oh yeah. this hurts too bad you started yeah. getting soft yeah so then uh, so then this we very 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 graphic i love it and so then <laughs> and so then we uh and so then we finished whatever and then she um and then like her roommates were like calling her down i guess there's like a problem down in like in, in like the like the first floor or whatever and like this room was dark and she 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 goes out of the room she closes the no before she closes the door she's like please don't leave please don't leave please don't leave and um she she closes the door and i'm in like this empty ass attic in the dark and i'm <laughs> i'm just like well, well is, is she going to come back <laughs> so um so anyways yeah she uh she comes back up we do it again and she's like oh, oh dude I, at this point, like my like my knees are gone, my kneecaps. I, I felt I felt my kneecaps like in pain for like another two weeks after that. Oh my Dude, God. it was so bad. And then we proceeded to sleep on the couch, and her fucking roommate was just asked and out I, on I on her bed with her roommate. That's crazy that it was her house, yeah. but you were in the attic. Yeah, yeah. And That's dude, my uh, my knees were fucking gone. They were so it it, it hurt <laughs> so bad. <laughs> It was so. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It's the least enjoyable. Sex yeah, ever. it wasn't enjoyable at all. But I mean, sh- she ain't bad when we're on an actual bed. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brendan <laughs> is up to the plate. <laughs> what do you got for us, sir? <sighs> Heidi, if you are on the live, please log off now. <laughs> so uh, this is nothing a mother should hear. This was my sophomore college. Probably texting me right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I heard you. This was my, and my coach said I'm a turd. Um, so this is my sophomore year of college. This story's gonna be fairly quick. Um, sophomore year of college, I went out to Miami mm-hmm. for like a couple of days, and when I was out there, we were having fun. You know, a lot of shit went down. Didn't remember a lot of stuff, whatever. And we went to this one club, and I wasn't old enough to get in. I'm not 21 yet, but we went to the club and there was this one girl. I was not attracted to her whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like from a distance. Yeah. From a distance. She was like, I am me up crazy. 
And then I was just like dancing with my boys, whatever. We were going crazy. Mm -hmm. And then this one girl, that one girl came up behind me and grabbed my ass. And I was like, (laughs) all right. <laughs> all, right. all right, here we go. Actually, she got my ass. I was like, "Yeah, it's a weird. It, it's a different sensation when a girl like just squeezes your know. ass. It's like weird. I don't know." And I was like, "It's like whoa, hey." <laughs> I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is this is different." Yeah. So I was like, "All right, let me test it out. Let me test it out." So whatever, we were talking it up the whole night. Um, she handed me a lot of a lot of drinks, but she mm-hmm. drank a lot more. Um, don't drink. It's the dumbest thing to ever do. Hunter, I know you're watching this. Don't drink. Um, <laughs> but she proceeded to say like some crazy things. I'm not going to mention on here. They are very graphic. Um, but she basically told me that she wanted to beat the shit out of me in the most sexual way possible. She said like she said some really crazy shit. But we went back to my hotel mm-hmm. and we were looking up, you know, and I remember it just because it was a long, it was like three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when we were hooking up, she like started like, Oh God, (laughs) bro. She was like, and Um, then I was like, she on top. I put, no, we're just making out, bro. (laughs) Wait, cover the mic for a second. Uh, No, there's, you don't know. It was a random person. It was Miami, bro. Oh, pay attention to the story. But basically (laughs) I was like, I was just like this. Like I was like, and she was like, no, 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 we're good. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> as soon as I touch her lips again, I taste fucking LITs and hot dogs, bro. <laughs> it was so oh! gross. Oh! In my mouth, dog. Oh! In my mouth. Oh! <laughs> LITs. Oh! Bro. Okay, you win. <laughs> Fred, you win. You win. You win. Oh, it's over. You LITs win. LITs and hot you dogs. Win. It was the word watered down LITs, oh mind you. Oh my god! And a street corner hot dog at three, like two o'clock in the morning, that she oh got barely cooked. My god. It came out in chunks, dog. Oh, I believe it! I believe it! Yo, red, end it. Yo, go. you got a wiener in your mouth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, wait, 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 wait. Does this mean that Brennan Ray is the original Glizzy God? I <laughs> oh my god, Brennan Ray is the Glizzy God. I was scarred for life, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I was scarred for life. Oh my Damn, God. I, have a st- I have a story like that, but we- it wasn't even a girl I was hooking up with. Yeah, we're just going to end it on that now, boys. <laughs> Wait, so we have throw up, we have knee pain, and oh, then we God. have blood. blood. Ooh. Those are just gross combos. <laughs> yeah. Just bodily uh, fluids and bodily aching pain. Bodily fluids and <laughs> aching pain. Everything that well, sexual intercourse is about. We're signing off. Woo, yeah, for another another banger. Oh. We'll be back next week. On. Thank you, Brendan Compo. <laughs> On stuff. Uh, 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 uh. After me. After me. <laughs>